What's going on, guys? It's New York Prepper here. It is Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, and I have another breaking news alert to share with you guys on the situation in Ukraine. So everybody's waiting for Putin's big annual address tomorrow to see what he's going to say, if he's going to mention anything about Ukraine. But in the meantime, we have some new satellite images of Russian military activity in Crimea. And this is coming from the Wall Street Journal. They posted an article today showing brand new satellite photos of Russian military activity in Crimea. Okay, so I'm going to read you the article here from the Wall Street Journal and show you the pictures. But they're saying that there's a whole bunch of Su-30 fighter jets and a bunch of other fighter jets that are being stationed in Crimea, um, possibly for an invasion of Ukraine. So I'm going to just read this article to you. Uh, Russia has moved warplanes to Crimea and bases near Ukraine to an extent greater than has previously been disclosed, adding to its capability for political intimidation or military intervention, according to commercial satellite photos of areas being used for the military buildup. The photos which were reviewed by the Wall Street Journal show Sukhoi 30 fighters lined up on a runway at an air base in Crimea. The aircraft which are known in a satellite photo, which are shown in a satellite photo from April 16th, have, haven't been there in late March. Okay, so the Wall Street Journal saying that these satellite photos are from April 16th and uh, they weren't there in late March, all these uh, fighter jets, the Sukhoi 30 fighter jets. Other Russian military units on the Crimean Peninsula include airborne troops, motorized rifle and armored units, attack helicopters, and uh, off-grid desert farming recently posted a video about two days ago where he um, uploaded some sources showing all kinds of Russian attack helicopters flying over uh, Russia heading in the direction of Ukraine. So I highly recommend you check that video out. Um, that's from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. And uh, you should see his channel in my featured channels. Uh, smoke generators, reconnaissance drones, jamming equipment, and a military hospital, the photos indicate. These forces and the stationing of Sukhoi 34, Sukhoi 30, Sukhoi 27, Sukhoi 25, and Sukhoi 24 aircraft elsewhere in the region, which are also depicted in the photos, have strengthened Moscow's political leverage to coerce Ukraine, current and former officials say. Um, and this is what uh, Philip Breedlove says, the uh, retired U.S. Air Force General, um, they have disproportionately, they have appropriately deployed the various elements of air power that would be needed to establish air superiority over the battlefield and directly support the ground troops, said Philip Breedlove, a retired U.S. Air Force general who served as the top NATO military commander when Russian forces seized Crimea and intervened in eastern Ukraine in 2014. So we have Philip Breedlove. He's a very well-known uh, Air Force general. He's saying that all of this equipment is, is basically what you would do if you're planning to do a massive invasion and support ground troops and support a ground invasion. So I'm going to show you some of these pictures here. Um, so you can see here we have a, a helicopter. We have some, uh, some housing units here. Okay, for troops. Um, it says here that this is Russian troop housing, a field hospital, attack helicopters, and military vehicles at the Opuk training area in Crimea. Satellite image was taken April 15th. So this was over a week ago, guys. There could even be even more uh, troops now. Okay, that this was uh, almost a week ago. Here we have another photo. It looks like some kind of uh, tanks here. Russian airborne forces at the Angarsky training area in Crimea. Satellite image taken April 15th. 
and you can see all these uh, tanks, and, and I can't really tell what they are. They look like some kind of an armored vehicle. Um, let's just see that again real quick. It's a good amount there. You know, you're probably looking at almost 50 vehicles here in this one picture. Um, and this is part of the picture that I showed yesterday. This is Russian Motorized Rifle Brigade at the Poganovo Training Area at Voronezh, Russia. Satellite image taken April 10th. Okay, so this is April 10th. That's a long time ago, guys. This was moved in a while ago. Um, so Russia's really mobilized quickly. They've mobilized all their equipment within a matter of days. They're, they're ready for an invasion of all of Ukraine. So check this picture out, guys. Look at all the, on the right side here, you can see all the artillery pieces down here. Over here, you can see some trucks. You can see more artillery pieces over here. You can see the barrels from the uh, the guns on the artillery. And you have different types of more, more trucks here, a lot of trucks. You can see all these utility trucks here, a lot of utility trucks with some artillery mixed in. And uh, here's the really interesting picture. This is the Russian jets that are lined up on an air base in Crimea. This picture was taken on April 16th. These are Sukhoi 30, and this is at the Saki Air Base in Crimea. You can let's count these together. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Just in this one picture, we have twenty-six. Sukhoi 30 fighter jets and these fighter jets are pretty impressive uh they have some pretty impressive characteristics here and um so i mean very interesting photos guys russia's continuing to build up their forces in preparation for possibly an invasion of ukraine i think they could possibly try to take all of ukraine based on how much equipment they've been moving um, I don't think they need that much equipment just to take Donetsk and Luhansk and Mariupol. I think that Russia's planning to take all of Ukraine or most of Ukraine. All right. And I think that Russia wants the entire Black Sea coast as well. So we have to wait and see what happens, though. Tomorrow is Putin's address. Uh, we have to wait and see what he says. But don't get your hopes up into thinking that Putin is going to telegraph what he's going to do. Um, he's not a Western leader. You know, he's not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and tell everybody what he's going to do. Um, but it is possible. It is possible that he's going to say that he wants to annex Donetsk and Luhansk, or he just, he could just totally keep quiet and not even say a word about anything going on in Ukraine. And he could just say that, you know, this is our territory and we're free to move military equipment equipment around as much as we want. And uh, he may just go really vague, you know, and, and keep it very vague. So um, and, and that would just totally play more mind games with the West. You know, by him staying silent tomorrow, it's going to play mind games with the West because the West is not going to know if he's invading or what his plans are. And the fact that, you know, diplomatic ties have been already cut with the West. So there's no communication. Um, guys, this is a, a worst case scenario. This is the Cuban Missile Crisis of our time. And we have to really take this seriously. I'm not saying you should panic or be scared, but you should definitely make sure you're, you're prepared in case there is a war and a war breaks out. In the best case scenario, this thing is just a regional war and it's only in Ukraine and it's just Ukraine versus Russia. And even in that scenario, we're still talking about economic issues and all kinds of economic problems resulting from that kind of a war. Um, but if it escalates, you know, then we're talking about World War III and we could see multiple fronts being opened up. You know, once the gloves come off, that's when things can really get scary, you know. And once those gloves come off, I think Russia would go after Finland. I think they would go after the Baltics. I think they would go after Poland, Romania, uh, you know, and uh, I think China would try to go after Taiwan. I think that Iran possibly would attack Saudi Arabia 
and maybe Iraq and some other surrounding areas, possibly Israel. Um, this could potentially be a world-changing event, and the media is not covering it, it at all because it doesn't fit with their agenda. Um, and remember, guys, the media is not going to tell you anything um, until the war is actually started. Okay, That's when the media is going to be covering it. Until the war actually starts, they don't care. Okay, so it's up to you to seek out the information. You know, you have to be able to find the information on your own. And, you know, my channel is a great way to do that. There's a lot of other channels out there that are following this. Uh, Shrimp Zoo is another channel that's following this. Pinball Preparedness, Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. Uh, you can check these channels out in my featured channels. If you go to my main page on my YouTube channel, go to featured channels and you'll see all these people, uh, shrimp zoo, off grid desert farming and, uh, pinball preparedness are covering this. Okay. Also Marfugal news is also covering this and Texas news studio and also blazing press as well. Okay. And I think Paul Begley's covering it too. So check all those guys out. Um, in addition to that, you know, seek out your own sources and do your own research and get your family ready for the worst case scenario. If this thing does go hot, um, make sure you pray for Ukraine and for the world and everybody involved in this conflict. Pray for peace because that's what we want. We just want peace. We want we don't want war. But that's pretty much it, guys. I'll keep you updated with any other information that I find. And as always, take care, God bless, and don't forget the four Ps. Pray, prepare, practice, and persevere.